about 60 million years ago, giant reptiles lived in the swamps of Colombia. This reptile that created terror in the ecosystem is basically a very large snake. Geologists named it Titanoboa. When the Titanoboa fossil was first discovered in 2009, the reptile was thought to have been 12.8 meters or 42 feet long. This discovery broke the previous record for longest snack discovered, Gigantophis. Before Titanoboa, Gigantophis was considered the tallest snack in Earth's history which was about 35 feet long. A documentary, Titanoboa Monster Snack, made by Smithsonian Institution, mentioned that Titanoboa was around 14.6 meters or 48 feet in length. A replica of the Titanoboa was recently displayed at the Smithsonian Museum in the United States. One has to be surprised to see the huge shape of the displayed replica. 60 million years ago, the average temperature of the Earth was higher than today's temperature. So Titanoboa was also longer than the common anaconda or python. Each Titanoboa was 10 to 12 times larger than today's anacondas. The longest snack found today is the green anaconda which can grow up to 30 feet long. Now we can discuss the gender of Titanoboa. It is common with snacks. Female snacks are larger than male snacks. Since there are not so many Titanoboa fossils like dinosaurs, scientists are not ready to say anything about the length of the male and female of this reptile. Presumably, female snacks were larger than males in Titanoboa as well. Place of Residence Fossils of Titanoboa have only been found in a coal mine in the South American country of Colombia called Cerejon. Titanoboa existed on Earth during the prehistoric Selendian period. Considering the geological timeline, that period is about 60 million years before today and 5 million years after the Cretaceous Tertiary mass extinction, that is, the Mesozoic era ended. So there were no dinosaurs on Earth. At the time, Titanoboa lived in the rainforest region. Hunting Method Titanoboa was neither venomous nor poisonous. For non-venomous snakes, their usual method of subduing their prey is to twist the prey tightly and suffocate it to death. Titanoboa suffocates its prey by squeezing them with muscles so that the victim's lungs cannot absorb any oxygen from the air. The snake then drove the prey alive or dead into its stomach when the prey was suffering from acute oxygen shortage. Like today's pythons or anacondas, Titanoboas could extend its mouth 10 times longer than its body to eat its prey. Since they did not have a venom injection system, instead of small teeth, they had strong sharp teeth. From the partial skull and jaw bones, scientists hypothesized that Titanoboa may have had rows of carved teeth in its mouth. Although it only took a few minutes to kill the prey, the time to eat the prey was quite long. Titanoboa's head structure was similar to that of other contractile expandable anacondas. Their lower jaw extended towards the back of the skull, which allowed their mouth to move more widely. Once the prey is stomached, the strong and heavy acid of the stomach dissolves the prey's flesh and bones. The amount of time it took to digest the prey depended on the size of the prey. In terms of hunting prey, Titanoboa was more comfortable sitting under trees than climbing them. Having a large body also made it difficult to move at constant speed on the ground which smaller snacks with a slender build did not have to face. Titanoboa might have been hiding behind a bush. Any prey passing by would pounce on him. Titanoboa was several times more spontaneous in water than on land. 
Titan of War was the name of an iconic terror in the water. Being able to carry his body weight in water, his body allowed him to run several times faster and expanded less energy. Another advantage of being in water was that he could submerge much of his body in the water and dust his prey in the eyes. Titanoboa could also hold its breath underwater for longer periods of time and attack prey from underwater. Food Habits Titanoboa's diet was naturally different from that of today's python and anaconda because there is a big difference between the fauna of 60 million years ago and the fauna of today. To figure out what animals were present in Titanoboa's diet, we need to look at the ecology of South America at the time. According to scientists, their main diet was crocodiles of Carehonsuchus, Acherontesuchus, and Anfracosuchus genera. Prehistoric crocodiles were fierce though, and the 35 feet long Dinosuchus crocodile was capable of devouring dinosaurs. Nevertheless, Titanoboa were able to crush whole crocodiles to death with their bodies. Even the modern day anaconda python is seen swallowing crocodiles whole. In addition to crocodiles, giant tortoises of the genre Carbonemis and Puentemis formed an integral part of the Paleocene ecosystem. Experts speculate that Titanoboa could not have swallowed them whole due to their large size. Their hard shell would have been another barrier. In addition to crushing the turtle's shells, they had to apply a lot of pressure to expel air from their lungs. But compared to the crocodile, the meat was very little. Therefore, Titanoboas were more focused on eating carnivorous crocodiles than turtles. In addition to crocodiles, turtles, Titanoboa preyed on lungfish and other snacks. Lungfish of that time were about 3 feet long in each form. Also, because female Titanoboas are larger than males, scientists believe that they prey on male Titanoboas. The diet described above is based on the ecosystem of the Serehan region at that time. In addition to aquatic animals and reptiles, different birds or mammals could have also lived in that environment. However, it is difficult to give any definite information in this regard as fossils of these have not been found. Cause of Extinction Scientists have proposed two theories as to the cause of Titanoboa's extinction. The first is global temperature change. The fact that the size of reptiles depends on temperature is clearly evident in science. The higher the temperature of the environment where the temperature variation is minimal, the larger the reptile will be. The closer one gets to the equator, the more the average temperature increases the more the seasonal variation decreases. Since the temperature is more stable at the equator, the climate is more suitable for reptiles. Because various bodily functions such as digestion, blood circulation, and respiration are performed much better at this temperature. As a result, more energy can be spent on physical growth. Being Titanoboa so long suggests that the global average temperature during the Salandian period was much higher than today. When the Earth enters the Miocene epoch from the Salandian epoch, the temperature of the Earth gradually decreases. Due to the sudden rapid drop in Earth's temperature, problems arise in Titanoboa's metabolism. They could not easily adapt to the ecosystem then. Then more small snacks appeared on Earth, which could carry on their metabolism well at low temperatures. This is how the huge monster disappeared due to the drop in temperature. Many people think that due to being huge and carnivorous, due to severe food shortage, they have been lost in the womb of the universe from the natural competition of the Earth. As the average temperature of the environment is increasing at a higher rate, many scientists believe that 
large-bodied animals may return to Earth.